Eric Ten Hag out and Thomas Tuchel in at Manchester United. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Yes, today's video is going to centre around this man right here, Thomas Tuchel, who allegedly is being lined up as one of the front runners for a potential replacement of Eric Ten Hag should Manchester United decide to venture in that direction. We are only three games into the brand new season. We are into the first international break of the new campaign. And already the heat is very much on the Dutch manager at Old Trafford. Especially following two defeats in a row. Only starting the season with three points out of a possible nine. And with back-to-back -back defeats and a an humiliating and embarrassing one at that. At Old Trafford against their fierce rivals Liverpool on Sunday as well. It hasn't exactly been the dream start for United towards a new campaign in which a lot of United fans were going into it with a lot of hope, a lot of optimism and a lot of excitement and maybe a little bit of expectation as well over what the season could have in store for the Red Devils. We're going to be talking about Ten Hag, we're going to be talking about Thomas Tuchel as well and everything else to go along with the managerial situation at Manchester United right now. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both thumbs are always and forever greatly appreciated. Get involved in the comment section. Use and abuse that section, people. Talk to me on this. Give me your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings. Whatever you want to call it that I'm sure will make for great and interesting reading down below. So please do use that section. Would love to hear from you all. Show what you have to say will make for great and interesting reading. So, without further ado, let's get on with talking about the current Manchester United managerial situation. I'm not going to go over too much over old ground, because yesterday I put out a video on Ten Hag, talked about a little bit about the pressure that he's under and everything else that goes along with it. But, since then, there has been seemingly developments and whispers and rumours in the press that allegedly Ten Hag's position as Manchester United manager is already unstable at this extremely early stage of the season. We of course know the FA Cup last season seemingly papered over some cracks for Manchester United's overall campaign. We know that maybe a mixture of that FA Cup win and maybe the managerial market not exactly screaming out to Manchester United um, a replacement that you can 100% back has maybe resulted in him keeping his job when it seemed very much likely that he would be leaving Manchester United by force from the club it seemed but now we are three games into the brand new season and there is already a lot of pressure that is already on the Dutchman's shoulders results not exactly being convincing. Even the win against Fulham, their only win of the season so far, not exactly the most convincing. Yes, you can take elements from each and every single game and you can try and find positives in those elements and you can go, right, we need to build on these and we need to improve on the negatives. But against Brighton, mistakes occurred and that is why they lost. And against Liverpool... They were just awful. Like, Liverpool didn't need to get out second gear to beat Manchester United. They were pretty comfortable for the most part. One or two hairy moments, like I said in my reaction video to the, to, to the game. But for the most part, Liverpool were very much comfortable and dispatched of Manchester United very convincingly and relatively easily, in my personal opinion. It's left a lot of people to question whether or not anything has really happened at Manchester United. And as I said in my video yesterday, I said that there are a couple of signs of improvement for Manchester United. Number one, they retain the ball a little better. And number two, um, they don't concede as many chances as what they have done uh, in, in the previous campaign. But relatively speaking... I don't think it's good enough. I don't think it's improvement enough, especially for a team that has had six million, six hundred million pumped into it over the course of the past few years. And I understand that this past summer has been the start of a new regime and a new era at Manchester United with Ineos, Sir Jim Ratcliffe and whoever else you want to throw under that same umbrella of Omar Barada, Jason Wilcox, Dan Ashworth. But it's not enough. It doesn't seem to be enough so far. 
And like I said yesterday, again, the incoming of Manuel Agate seems to be Ten Hag's last roll of the, di- roll of the dice. It seems to be that unless he doesn't adapt, unless Agate doesn't come in and help him change things, it's only going to get worse. It is only going to get worse as far as what Eric Ten Hag is concerned and as far as what Manchester United are concerned. Now, the news story that came out yesterday was in regard to the Eric Ten Hag situation. It says that he is under immense threat. He is still in an unstable position at Manchester United. And United may be beginning to open the possibility open, be open to the possibility of sacking Ten Hag and bringing in a replacement and they already have a few leading candidates reportedly that could be in for that role this isn't going to be an overnight thing it's re- being reported that this isn't going to be taking place over the course of this international break but he may have a few weeks to save his job and one of the potential replacements for him is allegedly Thomas Tuchel, the former PSG, Borussia Dortmund, Bayern Munich, and Chelsea manager, of course. That Thomas Tuchel. Is this exactly what United want? Maybe, maybe not. This is a guy who's got a big Champions League experience, of course, won the Champions League with Chelsea, got to a Champions League final with PSG. This is a guy with plenty of experience in different leagues. The Bundesliga, Liga, even the Premier League. So, experience-wise, he does kind of tick the box there. But in terms of style of play, it didn't exactly go according to plan at Chelsea. There were some times where he did play some good style of play, but he did often favour a more pragmatic approach. Is that going to relate with Manchester United? Is that going to be... A good continuation on from Eric Ten Hag. We constantly say how certain teams go from manager to manager with no real plan of long-term success. They seem to just throw a name out there and go, yep, we'll take him. Is this another one of those situations? Is this a good follow-on from the potential of Eric Ten Hag leaving? I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure that that would be the case, but Like I say, as far as experience goes, as far as what knowing the Premier League goes and all of that kind of stuff, and and obviously Champions League success as well, Thomas Tuchel does tick that particular box. However, good follow-on from Eric Ten Hag, good continuation from Eric Ten Hag, I'm not 100% sure. Like I say, it's not just about his style of play, but it's also about his preference of players United for example have just brought in two players from Bayern Munich Masrawi and Matthias De Ligt both of whom didn't exactly seem to see complete eye to eye with Tuchel so what's going to happen then when or if Tuchel does come in does he say water under the bridge and let's try again or does he instantly go well I didn't like you before and I still don't like you now so we're gonna try and work things a little differently around you lot and I know you've only just walked in to, to the club so I'm not exactly gonna be able to get rid of you straight away but you will be on the sub bench you'll be in the reserves what what is going to be the dynamic there that's going to be very interesting to see as well if that obviously is to come about this does not exactly scream to me like this was part of the plan this doesn't exactly scream to me that um this was the long-term solution to the manchester united issues and again i understand that the likes of barada and the likes of wilcox and ashworth weren't exactly in charge of the decision making process that initially kept Eric Ten Hag in his role, just obviously a more reduced role from manager to head coach. But at the same time, it's kind of, if, if it doesn't work out with Ten Hag, it's really damaged the club and probably has set the club back maybe another year or t- maybe another year or two further along than where they initially wanted to be. That could potentially be the case here. 
But like I say, this isn't going to be an overnight thing. This isn't going to happen in the international break. The report goes on. The reports go on to say like this probably won't be happening right now. Ten Hag will probably be given another few weeks, maybe to change uh, his uh, to change the opinion of him around. And I just looked over the, um, the, the the fixtures that United have got to come. Initially, after the international break, they have Southampton away from home. Southampton yet to win this season. It could be difficult for United. It is a massive potential banana skin waiting to waiting for United to live up on. But you would expect with the kind of match winners and the individual talent that United have, United should 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 be winning that one. Barnsley in the Carabao Cup. Again, depends how much uh, or, or how much of a threat. Um, or, or a priority the Carabao Cup is to Eric Ten Hag. We know he won it in his first season with the club. I'm sure he'd like to win it again. Again, could be a potential banana skin, but one that you would expect United to progress and advance into the next stage four. Then they've got Crystal Palace away from home. Big test there, especially with what happened with Palace against United last season. Then they've got FC Twente in the Europa League. Tottenham then await United afterwards in the Premier League, with United being at home at Old Trafford. Um, their, their first league game at Old Trafford since, of course, the embarrassing defeat at the hands of Liverpool. Porto are then in the Europa League away from home. And then Aston Villa away from home on the 6th of October before going into the second international break of the season. I would expect that to be the time frame. Those to be the fixtures between now and then. And then maybe United make a decision in that next international break. If things haven't turned around, that's when I would think United may make the decision. If he manages to produce some decent results in that if like you know he beats Southampton which is expected to do he advances to the next round of the Carabao Cup if he uh, was to guide Manchester United to maybe two wins out of two in the Europa League it could give him more time and probably you know a lot of people should give him more time depending on what side of the fence that you sit um, we said yesterday that this is a very divisive topic are you Eric Ten Hag in? Are you Eric Ten Hag out? That is the question. Uh, and of course, like I say, with Thomas Tuchel waiting in the wings, there are going to be some people that are going to be wanting Tuchel to be in, given his success at Chelsea with the Champions League, maybe his style of play as well, guiding PSG to a Champions League final. Maybe there are some people that are big fans of Thomas Tuchel. But it's not just Tuchel. It's not just Tuchel that is seemingly waiting in the wings. United are keeping their options open and are seemingly looking at a couple of other candidates as well. There's Gareth Southgate rumours. Remember how we talked about them towards the end of last season and going into the summer? Those rumours simply will not go away. And with them obviously not being a part of the England setup no more, he is free as a bird to choose where his next move lies. Um, those rumours simply will not go away, which begs the question whether or not there is actually legitimacy and seemingly some weight to them, which could be interesting. And like I say, I hope and pray that if Eric Ten Hag is to leave, that they do replace him with someone like Gareth Southgate, because that would A, be interesting, B, be funny, and C, I'm ready to get the popcorn out at that at any moment. And also, the more likely seemingly choice would have been Ruben Van Nistelrooy. A lot of people seem to think that with Van Nistelrooy's appointment as being one of Eric Ten Hag's coaches, that that would have been the logical, or uh, was, is he assistant manager? I can't remember what exactly his role is, but that would have been the likely move in the long term. Van Nistelrooy would take over from, from, uh, from Ten Hag and he would go on to become the long-term plan at Manchester United. He'd be a perfect follow-on from um, from Ten Hag, Dutch football into more Dutch football with more intensity, maybe a more modern-day forward-thinking kind of 
um, spin on things, and obviously he has ha he has been quite successful where he has been previously. So a lot of people did think Van Nistelrooy would be the long term successor to Eric Ten Hag. So it, you know, I guess United are keeping their options open with him uh, also being mentioned in the same reports that maybe he could also be considered for the role long term. But Tuchel's name is obviously the big one. Tuchel's name is obviously the one that has struck a lot of uh, a lot of attention onto this particular matter. And like I say, for me personally, obviously we know it's not going to be an immediate decision between Ten Hag and Manchester United. However, if obviously he is as unstable in that role as what reports are claiming. He'll only have a few games, a few weeks to maybe get things back on track. And that could spell the next international break being the time where United will have a massive decision to make on Eric Ten Hag. I know they've only just kept him in the job. I know that they've given him a new deal, new contract to kind of um, state more of his head coach role rather than a managerial role. But yet... He is seemingly in an unstable position and, and there is a lot of pressure currently riding on the shoulders of one Eric Ten Hag. But these are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. I want to know what you guys are thinking and feeling on this. Let me know your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, on the Eric Ten Hag situation down below in that comment section. Use and abuse that comment section, people. Tell me, are you are you Ten Hag in? Are you Ten Hag out? Do you want Tuchel to replace him? Do you want Van Nistelrooy to replace him? Or are you a Gareth Southgate fan? Let me know what you guys are thinking and feeling. Should Ten Hag stay? And if not, who do you see being his successor? I would love to know all of those things down below in that comment section. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way up. If you enjoy the video, subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both things are always and forever be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Flex Talks video, and I will see you speak to you all again soon in another video or live stream or whatever it may be. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Speak to you all again very, very soon.